and we're live. Maybe. Are we live? Mm. Okay, sorry, I've got like eight screens set up right now and I am checking back and forth between them to see what's happening because I see that I'm streaming on one screen and on the other screen that shows me the YouTube video I see nothing. So, hmm. Mmm, maybe the live control room? Uh, my encoder is started. This worked yesterday. Why is it not working today? Hmm. Okay. Well, that's not ideal. Am I streaming live on not the event page? Okay, yeah, no. So I'm definitely streaming live, just not on the event page. Hi. <laughs> this is the first time I've used YouTube Live to stream and it's, um, Going, going good, I think. Uh, and I see two people are watching. Hello, two people. I'm just really quickly gonna tell everybody else that we are in this stream and not the event I set up. And I don't know why, because yesterday it did go to the event that I set up. And I'm gonna sneeze, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, I think I'm muted in time. Um. Haps, hello! Thank you for, for following me to YouTube. Uh, I was posting videos on YouTube and I was like, you know what, instead of posting them on YouTube like four weeks later when I finally remember, why don't I just post them to YouTube to begin with and then stream on YouTube? Uh, <laughs> beans! Uh, Haps, let me know I didn't mute in time. Sorry. I feel like, you know like the 80s hackers where they're like, they've got 20 screens set up and you're like, what on earth are you doing on that many screens? They're live streaming. That's what they're doing. Um, so I'm really going to quickly go to the event that I set up all perfectly and everything and let them know that we are not on the event. We are on this page. How do I get the URL for this page? Well... Some of you found it, so hopefully everyone can find it. All right, and I gave myself a countdown deadline timeline, so I better get going right now. Um, the paper that we're gonna be reproducing today is this paper, Setting Priorities and Behavioral Interventions in Application to Reducing Fishing Risk. So basically it's a, a modeling paper, and the, the general idea is, I'll zoom it in so you can read if you want to, um, the general idea is that phishing attacks are not going to work on everybody. They're going to work on some people. And what qualities do the people have that they work well on? And how can you use those qualities to sort of figure out who to help um, and what sort of help to give them? So the TLDR of this paper is uh, the biggest thing that makes somebody vulnerable to phishing is that um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm trying to find the sentence that says this, uh, that they have greater response bias rather than increased sensitivity. So, uh, the problem is that they respond to a lot of emails and not that they can't tell the difference between, well, I mean, they also have a problem telling a difference between phishing emails and real emails, but the best thing that you can do is you can teach people not to respond to just every email they get, um, with, you know, the sensitive information. You should almost never send sensitive information over email. Hopefully that is something that people know. And whip, uh, the authors, Casey and Baruch maybe, have shared their uh, materials on the Open Science Foundation um, page, which is run by the Center of Open Science, which is out of the town nearest the place where I went to high school, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. So it's a little little hometown company um, and they have shared their data and also their scripts. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take this data and scripts and we're going to try and replicate their results on Kaggle. 
and we now have, trying to find the timer I have, uh, 56 minutes. So let's do it. Uh, step one is gonna be the data set. So I'm gonna see if I can just download this. Loading files. There we go. And this looks like uh, information on a bunch of different papers maybe. And then we have a modeling paper. Uh, and because it's simulation, we may not actually need the data set. So let's take a look at what they're doing in their code and let me zoom in so you can actually see good. Let's scroll over here. Okay, so these are mostly libraries I know. I'm not familiar with fields and it looks it's like it's for plotting images. So this might be something for the particular journal that they're submitting to possibly, I don't know. Uh, okay, and so here's the data set that they read in. It is the, it was, I was right, it's a literature review um, and it is uh, intervention, intervention effectiveness from a bunch of other papers it looks like. Uh, and then we're gonna plot D prime, which is a measure of sensitivity. Uh, and it looks like they've commented out this uh, bit here that uh, generates a TIFF, I'm guessing. Uh, okay, and we're gonna plot some things and we're gonna look at the effects across the different... Oh, so we're gonna look at the effects before and after intervention, I'm guessing. Yeah, pre-intervention and then post-intervention. Um, and the, it's D prime with a little it's not like D, but it's a, it's a, um, abbreviation for something. It's, it's called D prime. And they're also posting the effects on, it looks like they're looking at fishing specifically and other things. Uh, and then they do some, uh, simulation. So from here on out, it looks like this is all simulation. So they're, they're generating some data and here they're doing some modeling and I believe this is Monte Carlo simulation. Yep. Uh, and they're gonna be doing some Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, so here we're, we're generating, so this is a function to generate individuals. Uh, Oh, okay. And here's another data set we're going to need. Get data.person from URL. Let's see. Is that the URL we're at? Because I don't remember seeing this. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so this is part of Casey's, um, or I guess Dr. Chanfield at this point, uh, dissertation. And this is a different paper. So this was published in Human Factors and the other paper was published in Risk Analysis. So we're going to need to get another data set from another uh, project. And this is under the MIT license as well. That's good to know. So it was data.person, I believe was the, uh, yeah, data.person. Other code, phishing detection clean, phishing detection code analysis code report, supplementary materials, raw data, experiment one, experiment two, supplementary materials, standard.csv. Mm. Okay, I don't see a file called data.people. Maybe we don't need this. This is all this is all commented out, so maybe we'll just ignore this for now and do it if we have time. Uh, and then here's a function to generate a scenario. So a, a you know, a organized phishing attack, I think. And this, I have no idea what obsquant would be. So N, S, so this is probably number of attacks. Uh, and then you give it an individual and an attack. So maybe observe, Quants? I don't know. I don't know what QNT means. Um, so we're gonna have, oh, quantile. Observe quantiles. Okay, that could have been maybe above the function. That would have been a little bit more helpful for me. Uh, and here we are uh, looking at a figure from the paper describing uh, sensitivity versus 
quant? I don't know. Maybe that's not sensitivity. STT versus quantiles. Uh, and some of these things, so it looks like the things to generate the figures have been uh, commented out. So I'm guessing this TIFF function. Oh, I bet that's what's from uh, uh, fields. I bet that's what TIFF is from. Uh, so this TIFF function and this dev off, which is how you turn off the image device when you're done with it. So that's all been uh, commented out. Oh, I love this. I friggin' love that the section headers for the paper are in the text of the of the analysis. This is amazing. This is so clear. So like here, section 3.2. Let's go back to the paper and then let's go look at section 3.2. Scroll, 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 scroll. Here we go. Cumulative vulnerability by decile. So this should be the um, the things that we're getting out from this uh, particular section. So uh, figure five relative risk. Oh, no, this is figure four. So figure four, we've already done. Uh, and then figure five, this figure should be what comes out of scroll, 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 this bunch of code right here with a bunch of different stuff. All right. I'm, I'm excited. I think we can do this. Um, I think I want to start actually with a kernel instead of starting with a data set because I can always upload the kernel, the data set from within the kernel and then go back and document it later. So new kernel. And I'm going to do this as a notebook so I can generate each figure under the cell and I can, I won't have to run all of the code every time to make sure that it's working out. Uh, Hap says every paper should come with their respective code and data. Agreed. And this is an R. Oh, and let me zoom in a little bit. And you may notice if you watch my stream before, the interface is different. What? Um, so we've made some changes. You can still uh, pop it in and pop it out if you want. You can also, um, you know, make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, once you add a data set, you can preview the data set in a separate panel right here. Uh, and you may notice the internet is off. So there's now internet access and we're in beta. And I don't think it's been rolled out for all users yet, but we're getting there. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, copy replication of oh, is that too long? It's too long. Um, Canfield and Fishoff. Oh, and look, and there's an ORCID ID. Oh, this paper, man, it's so good. Uh, so an ORCID ID is a unique identifier that follows an individual researcher from institution to institution. I get one. Uh, and it's really nice because people have, you know, the same names and all sorts of other things that makes it difficult to know who's who in research. Uh, and this was published in 2017. Awesome. And I'm just gonna quickly leave myself some notes so I can make sure I can find back, go back and find out everything I need it. This kernel is a replication of, oh, oh no, that's the URL. I do want that, but first I want the name. Name of the paper. Uh, and published in risk analysis. Code was shared on the OSF site. And then I'm gonna have a link here. Just so I can go back and find all of this again when I need it. All right. Uh, so let's start my patented copy and paste method. Uh, and have to ask how you get an ORCID ID. Uh, and the answer is you go to the website and you sign up for one. Um, and anyone can do it. You just need to sign up and uh, blah, blah, blah. They use cookies. Thanks for letting me know. Um, you just sign up and it follows you around and you put it on papers and in your, your GitHub repos and on your Kaggle profile, maybe, uh, and let people know who you are. All right. So uh, let's start copying and pasting. And for now, I'm actually going to, 
and that should all work. We might have to install fields. Oh, no, we don't. These are all already installed. I'm going to hide the outputs. So we don't have to look at that. Uh, and then this next section on the review of effect size, I'm actually going to, um, I'm going to put this in a cell and I'm not going to run it for now. I'm going to comment out this whole cell. And I think, oh, I can never remember what the shortcut for this is. I think it's alt shift backslash. No, shift control regular slash shift control backslash. I don't remember. Uh, so I'm going to hit escape to go in command road and hit H, which will bring up the help. Uh, and it should have the command here to so comment. Ah, oh, so it's just control backslash control that one, the one that points that direction. So I'm going to select all this code and control that one. There we go. And then I can just uncomment this later once I read in the uh, data, but I don't know that we need the literature review right now and we only have 45 minutes, so I am prioritizing. Um, oh, and it looks like somebody actually is in the other uh, event. So let me real quickly just let them know where that we're in here once I figure out what the URL of this is. Um, Oh, here we go. And then if I go to the event, sorry, like I said, I have eight screens set up and it's, it's a lot. letting people know. Okay. Do, do, do. I'm going to go to the event. Streaming to the event. And I will troubleshoot that later. Okay, everybody knows where we are now and hopefully they will be joining us. Okay, so let's move on to after the lit review. So this section is the literature review. We'll come back and do this if we have time. The next section is modeling. Um, and these are functions. So I'm gonna put them in their own cell because this shouldn't return anything. It's just creating these functions, uh, which I like to see. I'm a very, very functional programmer. So this is very much my my thing that I like. Uh, and that's just, you know, my personal preference. Uh, <laughs> Hap says, you have eight screens? Yes, if you count the phones um, and, the, and the laptops. It's too many. I don't need this many. <laughs> I need to consolidate. Uh, and hello, Hakim. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, appendix. Here's another thing we're not gonna do right now. Uh, I'm gonna keep going with all of the um, uh, functions all together. So here is to generate the scenario. Here is the observed quantile. So these are all gonna go into one cell. So you can just run one cell and get all your functions uh, and not have to worry about it later on. And now we're going to generate our first figure. And this is going to tell us if our uh, cell, if our, if our functions all work. Because just running the functions, as long as there's not a bug in the function code, they'll run. Uh, but they might be broken in a way that you won't see until you actually test the output. OK. <gasps> it worked. Ah! Guys, I'm so chuffed about this project. Uh, I've been working on a project where I try to reproduce a bunch of papers, and so far, this has by far been the smoothest experience. Not that anyone, like any research code that you choose to share is good. Like any code is better than no code, regardless of the quality. I am absolutely not shaming anyone. I'm just saying that this is a really good example. Nobody gets an F. 
but this this particular project so far gets a gold star for me. It is real, real good. All right, uh, and that worked, and we can double check. So here is the a little bit squash. Um, here is the figure that we generated, and oops, you were talking about orchid IDs earlier. Uh, and here is the figure from the original paper. So as you guys can see, it looks pretty much exactly the same. So we completely replicated this figure, 10 out of 10, nice and easy. All I had to do is copy and paste, which admittedly is easier for a simulation paper because you don't need to worry about where the data is. And we might get into that a little bit later when we go back and we do the lit review. Uh, but for now, I'm very pleased. Okay, uh, next section. So that was figure four and here we have uh, section 3.2. Uh, we have another function that does quantile pr pr performance, preference, perfunctory. I don't know what the perf is. Um, and none of the comments are helping. But here is the statistical bit. So this won't generate a figure, but it will give us a bunch of, uh, statistical output. So let's run this, see how it goes. And this may take a while because we're doing uh, quite a bit of generation and then we are doing quite a bit of uh, um, testing. And oh yeah, it's still running. So when I click out of the cell, you can see this uh, little asterisks in here, that means it's still running. And you can also see this stop here and that will stop your notebook running. It won't restart the session. It will just stop the uh, whatever process is currently running. So like if you run all the cells in your notebook, uh, this will this will stop all of them running wherever you got up to. Okay, so we'll let that go. Uh, and we will continue our copy paste spree. Uh, so section 3.2, is the cumulative vulnerability by decile. Uh, so that is uh, what we're gonna plot in here. Uh, and the information that we're getting from this, as you can see, the bottom 10% of users account for 20% of 26% uh, of the total number of successful attacks. So basically not everyone who gets spearfished or fished is equally likely to respond to it. There's just like, you know, a certain portion of the population in this simulated population that is um, uh, more likely to, to respond to these attacks and to have their, their information compromised. Oh, and are we done? All right, we're done. Uh, so I could, if I wanted to just, oh, oh, that's right, that's right. The other exciting thing that happened, oh, maybe it didn't. It was working earlier. Interesting. Okay, so that tells me um, environment variables was working in our notebooks like earlier today. So I think this may be something to do with my computer, specifically the computer I'm streaming on now. So I will I will uh, troubleshoot that later on. Um, so we can look at test.spear.count.mean. So this is a uh, of spear phishing and then we can see for um, each of the deciles. So if you take a data set and you um, order it and then you cut it into 10%, like the lowest 10%, the next 10%, the next 10%, the next 10%. Um, and it's cumulative. So this is 10 and 20, 20, 30 and down, 40 and down, 50 and down, 60 and down. So it's like percentiles, but with tens. Okay, so that all worked well. And the next thing we want to do is plot these. I'm going to put a, put a few cells underneath this so we're not staring at the bottom of the screen. And that should be the next bit of code. Yes, I will, I will take your cookies. Uh, and this is the code that should give us this plot. So let's find out if it does. It's a lot of plotting. And then uh, we're also going to report the percentage of relative risk. So we're going to have some uh, console output underneath our figure. And this might also take a minute. Oh, no, that was pretty fast. All right. So here are the figures that we made. And here's the figures from the paper.
Hmm. 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 I think maybe these axes are in the... Nope. I was thinking maybe the axes had been had been flipped. Not the case. All right. So... Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's not the same as it is in the paper. The scales are also different. And it is a simulation paper, but we did set the seed, I noticed earlier. So we've set the seed before every mm, simulation we set the seed separately. That's maybe like, that's maybe not ideal usually for something like that. I will, I will put that at the beginning of a script and only do it once. Um, well, that doesn't uh, tell us why we're getting this difference here. Percent count rather than total. Okay, so there's some differences here. Uh, we did not uh, perfectly perfectly replicate this bit. Hmm. Let's keep going and then we'll come back to this and figure out what's going on here. Okay, uh, so part three, and what are we gonna be doing in part three? Cost, benefit cost analysis of behavioral interventions. Um, so here we should be looking at the interventions. I'm just going to really quickly scroll through and make sure there's not another figure we're missing. Nope. All right. Uh, so here is another function that uh, models the cost of behavioral interventions. And then we have the simulation and then we have the plot. So I think I'm going to do just the function and then the simulation and then the plot. Uh, and that's just to make it easier for me to run. Because the function won't take much time to run and if we end up needing to adjust that, we can just do that. Um, but the simulation is gonna take a minute. And then once the simulation is done, uh, oop, the um, plotting should be fairly fast because it looks like they are not doing um, any of their, uh, what am I looking for here? They're not doing any of their something. What's it called? <laughs> they're not generating any data and they're not doing any simulation in the plotting section. So, oh. And you can see we're, uh, we're still running the simulation if you look at this cell here, because it's got the little, little asterisks of, I'm thinking, give me some time. We can actually uh, see, Ooh, maybe we can't, if it's a little bit bigger. Uh, so we can actually see that our CPU usage is at 100% right now, so it's chugging along. Um, and we have, we have plenty of memory space left, I'm not worried about that, but we are we're using all of the resources we have available with the simulation. Uh, and then we will plot it. And finally, we will generate this report. Uh, and this will give us the cost benefit information that they report in the end of section three. Ah, here, 3.3 uh, benefit cost analysis. So that is the code for that section. And I don't expect anybody else to have read the paper. And we're still doing simulation. I always almost want to say stimulation, like neural stimulation, but it's not. It's simulation with no T. All right. And then that is the end of this script. So this is all the modeling and the figures. And uh, the one thing that we haven't done is we haven't uh, done the... Uh, literature review part of the paper so and I think that's what if we scroll up I think that's what this top correlation figure is I think this is for the literature review um, risk is high when sensitivity is low and users are biased towards clicking on links and emails positive response bias um, so sensitivity is your ability to tell whether or not an email is a phishing email uh, 
and oh, you know what? I think that this figure might actually be uh, this thing that they wanted us to go get data from another chapter. So these were uh, chapters of the dissertation originally. Uh, where was I? I think it's this bit that's all commented out here that requires. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think this uh, data set is the data set and the plotting that will give us these figures. Um, let me see, figure one. Okay, so this will be um, when we when we read in the data on the other, um, when we read in the data on the other studies, this is what will give us this information. Uh, and each of these is a different study. And when we uh, figure out uh, which file in this other study uh, data.person corresponds to, um, then we will be able to reproduce this figure. So both of these have been commented out, um, one by me and one by the author. And we also have this sensitivity f uh, script, that's what it's called. And this is for the appendix. D prime and C, sensitivity analysis. I don't think this was in the paper. So I'm not gonna focus on this right now. I'm gonna focus instead on the, um, on the part of the code that did make it in the paper. So that must be from an appendix, I'm guessing. Uh, is there a link to an appendix? More information here. Oh, hey, she was the NSFTRP too. Uh, cost benefit analysis. Yeah, okay, so I think that that was not in this particular paper. I think that's probably why it's in a different file is that it wasn't included in the final version. Oh, this is taking a minute, huh? <laughs> So it's still going, it's still simulating. If I add a data set, will I cause this to stop? Let's find out. So I'm gonna upload a data set. Actually, what I should do is I should look and see at this. No, it will run while I'm up uploading a data set. Uh, and we're going to add this data set of other papers. So this is a literature review of information effectiveness. I'm gonna download this, and then I'm going to upload this, and you guys can't see this, hopefully. Yeah, because um, you should only see the, the one file. And let me find it in my file system, which is a bit of a mess. Uh, and then we will, oh, I sorted it the wrong way, sorry. Uh, we'll be able to include this in our analysis. Oh yeah, our simulation's done. You can see that the uh, cell here has finished. All right, so it should be in here. Hmm. All right, well, apparently I didn't actually uh, save it in my downloads folder, which is where I thought I did. So let me save this in a better place, I guess. Uh, figure out where my downloads have gone to. I can't believe that this is the hardest part of this so far. Uh, Walber asks, will this video be available after this live code session? It should be. I really hope it is. Um, I think I've set it up that way, but also I thought I set it up to stream to the event and apparently I didn't. So we'll find out, huh? Um, but I'm also recording so I can upload it from, from my computer. Good question. Okay. I've successfully downloaded it. It's not in my downloads folder. Where is it? This is a great question that I also would like the answer to.
Okay, it's not in there. Ah, there we go, I found it. So, oh, is it not? Well, okay, we should be able to handle things that aren't CSVs. So this is intervention effectiveness. Intervention effective, effectiveness from Canfield. Oh, this is gonna be way too long. Um, uh, what do I call this? Fishing. Fishing intervention effectiveness lit review. Um, keep it private for now until I have made it much nicer looking. And now, I still can't. What? They're in there. I swear to gosh. I'm looking at them right now with my eyes in the other file. Oh, okay. There we go. I found it. <laughs> Sorry, I really need to clean up my final system. It's uh, it's a bit of a mess. And oh, that's a bug. Okay. Uh, there was a button there. It had no text on it. Did you guys see that? The the bug without the text. The thing without the text. And now it's gone. Mm. Okay. I guess I'll just do that again. Uh, and meanwhile, we can look at our very lovely, scroll zoom out so you guys can see the whole thing. Uh, we'll look at this one, which is, this looks the same to me. Yeah, that's the same figure. Um, so we had no problem replicating this one. It's just these ones that we had a problem with. So let's first start by adding our data set. Um, not entirely sure what's going on there. Fishing effectiveness lit review. And this is under an MIT, um, what's it called? License. So this is licensed for redistribution. Uploading, create. All right, uh, and let me zoom back in so you guys can see again. Uh, and then we can try running that first cell that we commented out. Hmm, is it because I'm zoomed in? Does it look better if I zoom out? No, it just doesn't look good. All right, well, I got a file bug report on that one. Uh, and because I've added a data set, we restart our session. Um, and you also should restart your session after you add uh, another uh, a custom package. And I think now if we just uncomment this, which I, again, I can never remember this. I think it was control slash. It would help if I had actually selected the things I wanted to uncomment. Control slash. Mm -hmm. Other slash. Yeah. Control the other slash. The one that tilts where the bottom is on the left-hand side and the top is on the right-hand side. That's the slash it is. Rachel, you sound like you don't know the difference between forward slash and backslash. Listen, you are correct. All right, so now this should just work. Let's find out. No, oh, okay. Uh, could not find function image.plot. So that should be, oh. Yeah, that would be because I didn't read in all the libraries first. Good job, Rachel. Four out of 10. And there we go. So these are the figures. Oh, we do get both. I see, I see, I see, I see. So here we're generating this uh, background, but the points are from a different data set that we don't know what it is. So points off for that, like like two points. Um, not that I'm great. I don't want people to feel like I'm grading them. I'm just sort of like finding what's good and what works. And this thing where some of the data is in a different data set, in a different file folder, in a different structure associated with a different paper, for me, does not work very well. Um, so note here, the points for the second chart are in another other data set associated with a different paper. 
Not ideal. Mwah. Mwah. Not ideal. Uh, besides that, this so far has been a breeze to replicate. Um, so I just uploaded the data set, pointed it at it, and no problem. Super easy. Uh, so the one thing that we do have trouble with, let me run it all from the top and see if we still have this trouble, is that uh, second set of charts that did not look like the charts in the paper. And I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So the ones that should show up right under here when they're done. Uh, and what they look like in the paper is this. And in uh, the first time I ran this code, they sloped the other way, even though the axes hadn't been flipped. So instead of going down as, so instead of percent of sexual, successful attacks going down as the decile vulnerability went up, instead the percent of successful attacks went up as the decile of vulnerability went down. I figured out what it is. You'll be happy to know. Um, it is that this figure does not show cumulative um, percent of successful attacks. We definitely calculated cumulative uh, percent of successful attacks. So that is probably what's going on here. Cumulative percent successful attacks, percent successful attacks. I've cracked the code. I have figured it out. Um, so let me just add a little section here. This figure is different from the one in the paper, which shows percent successful attacks instead ooh, instead of cumulative percent successful attacks. Uh, so all we need to do is we need to figure out how to get uh, the percent instead of the cumulative. What should be, we can do that, right? We got 20 minutes. This has been, I'm um, be honest, way easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a mess. It has not been. It has been easy breezy, easy. I think I wanted to say easy breezy and also easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I started to say easy breezy lemon squeezy, which is not a thing. So where do we do the cumulative stuff? Let's figure that out and then not do that. Okay, uh, so mean cumulative of mean, I'm guessing. So it looks like this dot mean dot two instead of dot ct dot mean is where we're gonna have our difference. Uh, so here we see y is, hmm. Okay, so the thing that we're plotting is this, um, rel.risk.data.count object. And they're using the Google style guide, which I've mentioned before, not the biggest fan of. It's fine, but I write enough Python that having dots and variable names throws me off. Oh, beans, ah, oh, nuts. No, stop, there we go. Whew. I only wanna know a little bit about this. I don't want the whole thing. All right, so Cumulative, upper, lower. Oh, sorry, sorry, that probably sounded awful, I'm sorry. <laughs> so instead of cumulative mean, we want the regular mean. So when do we make this uh, column cumulative mean? Mm. It's probably not gonna be in the plotting, it's probably above that. Okay. Hmm. So what does this rel.risk.data look like? I think it's between creating this. I think here we have the regular mean. No, here we have the cumulative mean. Hmm. Hmm. Also, it's probably, we could probably do this. Yeah, okay, it's not that big. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah, so this is definitely the cumulative because it goes up to 10. Hmm, okay. So this object, rel.risk.data, has the cumulative mean already, and we don't want that. We want the other one. And... Hmm, output. test.rand.ct test.rand.mean.2 So let's check out this test.rand.mean.2 object. Let's see what's in here. What's going on? Hmm. Okay, that's cumulative as well. I think we're not going to find the raw non-cumulative data, I think. I think instead what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this and then calculate the non-cumulative mean. Uh, oh, somebody asked, what is the paper's title? The paper's title is Setting Priorities in Behavioral Interventions and Application to Reducing Fishing Risk which I might actually have. One sec, I'll, I'll post a link in the, in the chat. As soon as I find it. Um. Here it is, I found the link. And now I just have to find the tab where I put the chat. And there's the chat, there we go. A link to paper. Okay, so that is a link to the paper. And I think, so one of the reasons I wanted to move to YouTube is in YouTube, I think you keep the chat and you can look at the chat later. So we should be good to go. You should be able to see that if you're watching this later. We'll find out. Like I said, this is the first time I've used YouTube, so I'm a little bit, uh, um, there's some there's some wrinkles to be ironed out. Okay, so getting back into it. Uh, the problem is that we have the cumulative mean. We want the non-cumulative mean because that's what's in the papers. Here. Uh, it's not successful attacks. Mm, so just for the mean, I can definitely just do a simple transformation. I'm a little bit more worried about these error bars. Well, let's try it and see if we have if we have problems with it. So the first point should be the same. So for each hmm, okay. So this is the thing that we're plotting. We're plotting this rel risk data count, rel risk data count percent. Uh, oh, so we actually, rel risk data. So how do we get rel risk data count, rel risk? Okay, so it's the rel risk data that we're going to have to change in order to uh, change all of these. Uh, so this is our target. And I think what we can do so the the base change is what's ever in cell X minus whatever is in cell X plus one, but we need to do this by group. Yeah. So I'm going to reach my old friend, the tidyverse and figure this out. Uh, and this object was called rel dot risk dot data and then we want to 
group by attack output. We don't want to group by decile. Uh, and then we want to mutate so that mean is uh, lane minus Ugh. No, 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 no. Uh, mean for equals. How do I shift a column down by one? So my idea now is that I'm going to take this column. I'm going to add another column next to it. That's a copy of it, but shifted down by one. Um, so this is going to be 2.5, but it's going to be here. So it was 0 0.25, but here. 4.41, but here. And then if we get 4 0 0.44 divided by meh, minus 0 0.25, then we'll get the percentage instead of the cumulative percentage. Uh, and then I guess we will figure out these guys later. So... I don't know how to shift a column down by one. R shift column down by one. Mm, okay. Someone else has asked this. Uh, transform lag. Ugh, ugh. I love the tidy verse that already exists. Uh, mean before equals lag mean before. And I hope that by grouping this, it will do this by groups. Okay, that didn't work. Oh yeah, that's because it's that's not what it's called. It's called something else. Um, rel.risk.data, what's it called? It's called, all right. It worked, it worked, my grouping worked. Okay, um, so then mutate, and then what's the thing we actually plot called? No, I need to, I need to overwrite this one. Uh, so we're gonna overwrite that and we're gonna call it, and we're gonna subtract mean before Four. Oh, it would help if I spelled mutate correctly, huh? Nope. I've gotten certain on. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Except that. Mm. Okay, so what I need to do before this is I need to replace all the NAs with zero, because right now it's subtracting NA from a number and that's giving me NA instead of a number. Uh, oh yeah, I just noticed somebody from the chat said, use lag, thank you. <laughs> um, so I think it's na.replace, uh, na.action. Actually, no, let me use the, let me use the, uh, an object to send as it was given further, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, that's not helpful. Uh, na dot replace, r replace na with zero. Oh, there's gotta be a nicer way to do this. Let's see. Fix match. Okay, maybe there's not an... Oh, okay, they're doing benchmarking for what's the fastest. Uh... 
replace underscore NA. Just tell me the, I think it's just gonna be with zero. So let's try that, see if that works. Um, replace NA with zero, and then this should give us no NAs. Oh, mm, okay, that didn't work. Um, named list. If data is a data frame, it is a named list giving the value to replace an A with for each column. If data is a vector, a single value used for replacement. Um, okay. So I need to give it a column and the column name is mean before. Will that work? It will not work. Will that work? That will not work. Okay. Um, so the problem is that I'm trying to pass in this data frame at this point, but it is looking, it's looking for a data frame, but I need to pass it a list mean underscore before equals zero. Is that gonna work? Ah, it worked. Okay, we've done it. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think we just need to do, hmm. So the thing is these confidence intervals, right? Let's see. What do they look like in the original paper? Because my thought was that I would just shift them, but I don't think they're just shifted. I think they're changed. Uh, and that's going to be a problem. So let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit. Well, maybe they are just shifted. All right, let's try it. Um, so let's just try mutating multiple columns at once. So let's take the upper column and make it be the upper column minus this mean before we calculated. And then let's take this lower column and make it be lower minus mean before. And then we just want to drop uh, the column mean before because we don't need that anymore. Oop, okay. I thought that's what that was called. If you want to uh, drop a, uh, I thought that's if you wanted to drop a column, it was called drop. Uh, D plier remove column. Oh, that's right. It's select negative. Okay, so let's replace this and overwrite it at this point, and then run this cell above. See how that do. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole cell. And I also have this other cell, which explains it, and I would love to be able to move cells Instead of having to copy and paste, it would be amazing. Let's try to get the figure closer to the one in the paper. Just to describe what we're doing here, so I know why I'm doing all of this. Uh, and let's try this, okay. Oh, I do want the paper back. So this is our goal and we have not that. Oh, I see, I see what the problem is. We, uh, 
did all of these things to create the data set. So we just uh, wrote over our data set that we'd carefully massaged. Oh, okay. Well, that's not it. Uh, I definitely did a wrong thing somewhere in here. And I think it was with the, um, um, whatchamacallit, these ones, these error boundaries. So uh, the thing that I did was not correct. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure without spending more time digging into the code, uh, how to fix it. Well, that didn't do it. <laughs> uh, so we definitely got the means correct, but we didn't get the uh, error bars correct. We got the means correct, but not the error bars. Mar. Um, so I'll <laughs> work on that later. Uh, but overall, I am really impressed. Um, besides this, the one fact that instead of looking at the um, percent, we were looking at the cumulative percent. Uh, it worked really well. This was really, really simple, nice, clean code, well commented, well sort of like segmented, the data was shared. Um, 10 out of 10. I, I really, I really liked and enjoyed reproducing this paper and uh, I commend the authors for a job well done. So round of applause. Uh, and thank you. Thank you for joining me on this, this replication uh, journey. And I'm sorry for the uh, technical difficulties, which hopefully we will smooth out a little bit more. I had like my my thing down on Twitch and I knew where everything was, what the buttons did, and it turns out that maybe not quite so much on YouTube, uh, but we'll get there. And thank you for bearing with me. And I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.